Hello there. Hi. You are? My name is Charlotte Bronte. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You look quite puzzled. If you don't mind, what are you doing? Oh, this? Uh, it's nothing fancy. I've been trying to write a story for weeks, but I can never begin it in quite the right way. <gasps> You're a very famous writer, Miss Brunt. Could you offer me some advice? Certainly. I'm here for this very purpose. I suggest you begin by choosing a point of view for your story. I don't know what that is. Could you explain? Of course. Why don't we start from the first person point of view? Mostly your narrator speaks through the pronoun I. I see. Well, that's easy to understand. But how can this help my story? Well, I suggest we observe an excerpt from my own book. I am no bird, and no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will. Well, what do you think? I think I understand. The first person point of view can express the emotions of the character more freely. It is very engaging because each sentence is an emotional declaration. Very good. However, I did notice some issues when I was writing. It's sometimes quite limited. You can only see one side of the story, and therefore the narrator may not always be reliable. So, what do you think? Do you want to give it a try? Sure. Let me try to use the first person point of view to begin my story. Hello, may I join you? Can I ask what you're working on? Well, this kind lady has just been helping me with some ideas about the first person point of view. I'm stuck in my writing, you see. Ah, uh, yes. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, eh? Well, hello. I'm Charlotte Bronte. Pleasure to meet you. Sorry, I'm Nora Jemison, also a writer. Well, which point of view are you using? The only one I know of. The first person point of view. Oh, child, you can't just go with the first thing. At least get to the second person point of view. I once wrote a story from this point of view, and I think it's pretty neat. I've read very few books from that point of view. Could you elaborate? Sure. I'll recite this little episode then. You're the mother of two children, but now one of them is dead, and the other is missing. Maybe she's dead too. You discover all of this when you come home from work one day. House empty, too empty. Tiny little boy, all bloody and bruised on the den floor. Wow, now that, that is very engaging. I think it's even more engaging than the first person point of view. The way you use the pronoun you is really bringing me into the story. Every sentence is almost like a command. The way you present it seems so real. I agree. This point of view is more versatile and pliable than I thought. I enjoy the way you were able to take the harshness of the narrator to benefit the situation. I think I want to use this in my story. <laughs> oh, child, hold up. Don't rush like that. There are other points of view to know before you choose. The second person point of view may be good at delivering the background, but you can really get lost in a whole lot of characters when you're trying to write a complicated scene. Well, I suppose you're right, but what other points of view are there? I believe I can be of some assistance. Wait, you dress like Elizabeth Bennet in the movie Pride and Prejudice. You must be Jane Austen. Wow, I'd love to hear your suggestions. Thank you. Now it seems you have read my book Pride and Prejudice before. Do you know which point of view I used in the novel? Yes, I have read it. But I'm not very sure about the point of view. Hmm. Let me guess. We also have the third person point of view. You are so intelligent. In the third person point of view, the narrators are outside the stories, so they use he, she, they, etc. Actually, I applied the third person omniscient point of view. Omniscient means knowing everything. In this way, the story is in God's perspective. 
and you may provide all kinds of information about the characters that would have been hidden if you used the other points of view. Okay, allow me to find you one example from my book first. Uh, so, I can describe all my characters' thoughts in the book. Then I'm like a mind reader. No secrets before me. <laughs> yes. Okay, here, Mr. and Mrs. Bennett's characteristics are shown with the impression of objectivity. I convey the context in which the Bennett family lives, implying their development in the following part to you as an outsider. Additionally, the transition from Mr. to Mrs. Bennett is quite natural and smooth, because this point of view allows this quick switch from one character to another. Got it. I think it is interesting to be a mind reader like that but this point of view might not be very engaging. That's true. In this way, you can be objective and judge the characters all at once. Thank you for your advice. It's been quite a productive morning. Thanks so much for your help. Child, we can only get you so far. Let's give him some space to think about it himself. First person point of view, very engaging, but the narrator may not be reliable. Second person point of view, also very engaging, but easy to get lost. Third person, omniscient point of view, godlike perspective, but maybe distant to the readers? How can I ever make the choice? Should I write a drama instead? The points of view won't matter then. Excuse me, did I hear drama? <laughs> <laughs>